Good night to you. I'm hoping you've had a fantastic weekend. I'm just dropping in before the live part of this video starts. It's just being recorded live on Facebook. So basically, if you're watching this part, you're watching a replay. Can you just type in the number two so that we can basically see, you know, the, the type of traffic that comes through um, with these videos. And if you... Um, Watching this on YouTube, please leave us a comment because it just helps us with uh, syndicating all this com content. Now it just looks like the lunch and learn people are actually checking in. I see Luke Moroni is in the house. Look, my man, how you doing? Robert Broker, how's it going? Ruvim Bo, thank you all so much. Um, you know, I always have to... No, look, you're actually watching the, the live part. So this is the live part now so sorry about that i have to introduce the first um you know segment of the show you know just so that people can actually understand what's actually going on about so today we're talking about patience we're talking about how um basically what we're doing requires tremendous amounts of patience and tremendous amounts of discipline all right because um, what I see on the market right now is people that are just chasing their tails and people that are just really um, not getting the results. I'm also part of the problem. I'm also uh, trying to bring in the solution. The reason why I'm saying this is because we always need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. So today that's why I'm coming up with at least six of the patient strategies for growing your business online, all right? Um, and like I always say, guys, it takes 21 years to actually be 21 years old. And a lot of people are not going to enjoy this video because it's... Um, it's very confronting to say the least and also it's what people are not used to hearing these days. It's always a quick, 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 hurry up and shut up or hurry up or queue and wait, etc, etc. I'm actually telling you to take a step back, relax and actually look at where are you actually going? Where have you been? What have you got, um, you know, uh, you know, in front of you right now? Because you cannot climb up a ladder or you cannot climb up a hill with your hands full, all right? So you need to have empty hands and a lot of patience and a lot of greed for you to actually, um, you know, be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And then that's the, the whole uh, premise of this video. I really believe that if you're going to have an online business, you should be able to create for and relate to your audience. And that's the reason why right now I want you to realize that the sooner you stop believing in magic formulas or the sooner you stop believing in shiny objects, um, you know, for, for your success, the better it would be for yourself. First of all, you won't um, frustrate yourself. You won't frustrate your audience. The reason being your audience now has a lot of choice. The moment they stop following you, the moment they don't understand where you're headed to, the moment they stop realizing if you're going to be the best person for them, that's it. You've lost those people forever and ever. You know what I mean? So that's the reason why I'm really, really happy to see my business and my projects and my um, game and audience unfold and actually take shape on its own. Because if you try and control these things, um, guess what? They'll have a life of their own. And before you know it, it frustrates you and it frustrates your audience. All right. So, you know, just um, looking at the people that are tuning in, Sandy Walker, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you had a fantastic Australia day right there. Um, if you would notice, um, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed there are more entrepreneurs these days online. They're talking about maybe marketing some kind of business and they're offering some kind of service. Every single day, they're coming up with something different. And when you log on to your social media, you know what I mean? You see maybe your entrepreneur friends, you know, they're trying to sell you a podcast service or they're trying to help you build a funnel or they're trying to help you run ads or they can teach you how to do a live video or teach you how to, um, you know, um, create a profitable blog. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Let me tell you something, guys. Building an online business is not easy. There's so many moving parts. If you don't know where you're headed to, if you don't understand what is expected of you and what you're supposed to be doing, 
there are some hard real, um, you know, realizations that you have to actually realize in order for you to be doing have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, I see Robert says, I've been doing that. I saw myself doing and then taking a step back and deciding what it feels um, the way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The one thing that I really want to stress as we go along um, is everybody can be a leader. Everybody can be an authority and everybody can actually uh, be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Luke says it's interesting that the mobile phone live feed is two seconds faster um, than watching on your laptop. Is that so? I didn't, I didn't realize that's what it is. I'm actually uh, broadcasting this off a mobile phone. So maybe that's why. And it's on 4G network, you know? So... You know, I, I, I feel like I'm just preaching to the choir and I'm not telling you guys anything new. You know what I mean? And having said that, I actually love the freedom that, um, you know, creating an online business can actually provide. While I'm shooting this video right now, I've got videos that are playing on YouTube. Um, I've got, um, you know, campaigns that are going for my clients. Um, I've got articles that are also going on the Australian Business Online Directory. I've got... A lot of content that's making its way into people's newsfeed as we speak. You know, I've got all those status that people are still responding to, etc., etc. All these ways that I have mastered in get getting people's attention. And it's not easy. Um, first of all, when I came here to Australia, I knew nobody. And when I started this business, nobody wanted to have a bar of what I had to say. It wasn't their fault. The problem is... They, there's already people that are clamoring in the market right now. There's already people that your audience is listening to right now. There's already people that are giving your audience influence and content. How are you going to be able to sustain, first of all, up until your audience actually knows who you are, follows you, and starts treating you with some sort of credibility or with trust? Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, some people can go you know, away for six months, eight months, nine months, and then when they come back, it's still good old, same old me, same old prosper, same old content, same old time with the same old consistency, all right? Are you able to give your audience that, or are they just going to see you as, as, as a meaningless, um, you know, generality, a, 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 wonder, a wandering generality, as Zig Ziglar points it out, or are you a meaningful specific? I see Charlie O'Shea has just tuned in. Charlie, my friend, how are you going? I hope you had a fantastic, um, you know, uh, Australia Day weekend and you enjoyed it with your family right there. And thank you so much for all the chats that we have behind the scenes and the trust and the confidence that you also give me by chatting back to me, all right? You see, one other thing that I've actually realized about this whole entrepreneurial journey is a lot of us copy all right. I know they say why invent mediocrity when you can copy genius, but I want you to actually realize that not everyone is the same. Okay, you may want to copy what Ty Lopez is doing, or what Gary Vaynerchuk is doing, or what um, you know uh, Charlie O'Shea is doing, or what Luke Moroni is doing, but you are not them. All right. Customers buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And guess what happens? They usually don't buy from strangers. Or if if they buy from strangers, they would have done a little bit of their due diligence. Now, if your stuff and if your content is a direct replica of somebody else's content, guess what's going to happen? They're just going to go and buy from the original source because our clients are not stupid. They are exposed to the same content that you are exposed to. All right. So stop trying to run and become famous and become somebody you're not because all you're doing is you're just advertising for that person that you are, um, you know, copying from. Does that does that sort of make sense? Do you know what I mean? You need to bring out the best version of who you can be, because if you're a clone of somebody else or some sort of famous entrepreneur, you know, your clients will never get to know the real you. Do you know what I mean? And Charlie says, build your self brand. There's only one you. Absolutely. And Luke says, be me. <laughs> no, be yourself. That's all that matters. You know what I mean? Because if you look at, the, at my fingers right there, no finger is the same height. All right. So if people start seeing some sort of 
um, uh, stuff that they've seen or hear, content they've heard somewhere else, guess what they're going to do? They're just going to close their computer and go on and do their work because it's nothing new. They've heard it before or if they haven't heard it, they're going to hear it from the source because you know why? It's better that way. Do you know what I mean? So your clients really need to know the real you so that they know you, like you and trust you. And you know, when they want to buy, they will buy basically from the person that, you know, has, has inspired them. Because if you're copying from somebody else, guess what? Your audience is also listening to that person. You're not the only person that's got access to that famous entrepreneur, you know? Do you know what I mean? And Charlie says you'd never be 100% trying to be somebody else. Absolutely. And guess what? You can never beat somebody you're trying to copy off of. You know? So when the clients now want to buy, guess what's going to happen? They're going to Google that same thing and the original person of that content is what's going to come up on Google. And guess what? You've just advertised for that famous entrepreneur. Try and figure out how you can make things your own. Do you know what I mean? And then figure it out how you can, you know, um, ma make it your own. DJ it in some way that is unique and, 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 and can only be found with you. Now, Scott says, know you, like you, and trust you. Love it, mate. <laughs> Love your work. Oh, absolutely. Because that's what happens. And look at, look at the relationship we now have, Scott. I know a bit about your family. You've now spoken to my wife, etc., etc. If we're both going to do transactions, you know where to find me. I know where I can find you, etc., etc. And that's why we're doing this. Because people just really want to do business with those they know. You know? So use frameworks that work. I'm not saying there are frameworks out there that work, but use the frameworks that work, but don't be a clone. And stop rushing to do things that are not meant for you because maybe you're going to try and be like Gary Vaynerchuk, but you cannot, you know, fulfill the, 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 the content appetite that a, a Gary audience now has because Gary has a team behind him. So you can use the framework, but don't be a clone. So patience, create the systems, create everything else that works along with you and then start modeling success. Do not copy it. And in the process, let your voice come through and you start building a business that's truly and uniquely yours. Because we might try and run and become somebody else that we're not. But then guess what? If you try and build a house with no foundation, with you understanding what you're supposed to be doing and for who and why, guess what's going to happen? When the big bag wolf comes in, he's going to huff and puff and blow that house away. All right? You can tell I've got a... I've got a total in the house. I now relate business to fairy tales. But it's it's still the truth. Because the big bad wolf is 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 the audience. They're just coming through getting what they want. And if, if what they want is what you're saying at that particular moment, they'll give you a moment and then and, and give you a, you know a couple of minutes. And then pretty much after that, if you cannot sustain their content need, if you cannot sustain their um you know, their output, then grant opening for you and grant closing, you know? And um, Luke Moroni says, love Gary Vaynerchuk and his comments, his suggestion, I'll have my own version of him. Absolutely, be Luke Moroni in a way that maybe emulates what he does because what he does is working. But don't try and be like him, all right? You don't have the team behind him. You don't know what happens, um, you know, when we're not watching. So you don't want to... Um, you know, put yourself in, 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 in that sort of predicament where you cannot fulfill the needs that your customers now anticipate from you. All right. Now, Charlie O'Shea says there is a tribe out there looking for your style. Absolutely. Um, apparently, they say that every human being has privy to about 150 people that would virtually have the same values, have the same worldview and have the same inclination. Those are the only people you really have to go out and search for, you know? And then that 150 can then start creating your true 1,000 fans. You don't need anything extra than that, even if you look at it, um, you know, properly. If you look at it properly, we, we basically don't need empires or we don't really need thousands and thousands of people that don't even understand what we're talking about. 
Right now, if you notice, I'm really trying to narrow down my audience and even taking away people that I don't think I'm going to be helpful to in my, um, what do you call it, in, in, in my influence. Because there's no point in holding people hostage in either your email list or in your friendship or in your groups. You know what I mean? Just be clear who your core audience is. And then after that, stop coping or imitating because obviously those people are watching and listening to that very same person, um, you know, that, that you, 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 you're coping from. Now, look, say, same direction. Although we have different personalities, we are different people, same, same, but different. Absolutely. Like I keep saying, no two fingers are of the same height. All right. There are no two fingers that are of the same height. And, 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 and I speak this out of love. Um, I mean, maybe some people don't have all their fingers, but I'm just really giving an il illustration that is, you know, really close. And then once, once you've figured out who exactly you are, I mean, all this might sound simple and obvious, but we need to be reminded of all these things instead of being lectured to all the time. And that's where patience comes in. Because once people know and like and trust you, you can only influence people that actually you know, understand who you are and also are of the same worldview as you. So that's why you have to be really clear on who your core audience is. And like I was saying, you only need to find those 150 people because if you just throw a net and hope something sticks, your core audience is probably going to miss out on, 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 on the real genuine you and you're going to miss out on sales and you're going to be frustrated about being an entrepreneur. If you're trying to reach out to the whole world, you'll end up reaching nobody because your efforts to reach your customers will be scattered. So once you figure out who exactly are you, what your voice is, find people who have the same worldview to understand that message. Because if you just spray and pray with your marketing, then obviously not everyone is your customer. You know? So you won't be able to help those people, you know, which really, really need your, your service or who really, really need what you're talking about. So you need to be more specific and get in with your target audience. And it's really, really easier for you when you're marketing because you don't have to keep repeating yourself. You know, and this ultimately grows your business because these people will get to know you, like you and trust you because you're of the same worldview. And then it makes you focused. And once you are creating for and relating to this audience, your work, your days become so easy. You know, and your branding and your messages now become very clear. And all you do is send out an email, maybe on a Monday morning, and just tell people, hey, listen, um, you know, this is what we're doing this week. Anybody wants to pick a time to have a chat with me so that we can discuss how to make your business profitable and enjoyable. When you're clear about who your target audience is, and when you're clear about what your message really is, it makes it a whole lot easy to keep it really simple, simplifies your work, simplifies your day, and just simplifies your business. That's why some people burn out because they're trying to do 500 different things, be 500 different personalities instead of just showing up as who they are. Do you understand why it's even easier to be patient than you trying to jump on and take on all the things that you're being told are working or their surefire, you know, ways of doing X, Y, and Z. Because when you keep, keep your website simple, when you keep your Facebook simple, when you keep your appearance simple, do you know what I mean? It's easier to, to, um, it's easier to control. It's easier to, to keep up with, etc., etc. But if you put 500 different things that you have to look after, do you know what I mean? You can't chase two rabbits with, um, you know, um, at, at the same time. You know, so Charlie says, once I tap into my style, just sit back and watch me explode. Boom, 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 shake the room. Absolutely. You know, some people create um, their websites on, on um, you know, WordPress and then they have all these gadgets that are on there, um, you know, widgets and plugins. You don't need all of that. You know, every widget that's coming on your news feed, you don't need that. Do you know what I mean? Is it getting you closer to your goals? You know? You know, when somebody actually visits your website, it shouldn't confuse them, right? Because if you're not clear on who you are, what your message is, and what you're supposed to be saying, that also makes it very confusing for the person who's getting there. And as soon as somebody's confused, guess what they do? They just scroll out. So when it comes to your business, keep it simple. 
Really keep it simple. You know? I mean, you, 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 you can have it all, but you can't have it all at once. All right? So at the end of the day, when you start building, either it's a website, your business, keep it really simple. Find your voice and just relate, create and relate to that audience that already understands you, that knows you, likes you and trusts you. Because not everyone is your customer. And all of that is just practicing patience. You know, you, you start learning the biggest struggles of what your audience is actually facing. And then guess what you do? You go out there and you create products or services that actually help to solve those problems. Instead of you being all scattered, you no longer are effective and you're no longer, you know, seen as a leader because you too need to be, you know, you know, to be roped in. And once you've got that patience, it takes 21 years to be 21 years old. And once you have all that working together, you've got your voice, your audience is all in place. And, um, you know, your, your, your website is simple and it's clean. Rinse and repeat. That's all you got to do and start adding small products here and there. Just like what I did the whole of last year, I spent the whole of last year trying to figure out how can I be of more value to this audience. And that's when I came up with the Australian Business Online Directory. And it's really simple. And you now I've created a solid foundation. The, the, the online business directory is now just a first step for those people that couldn't afford my services right from the get go. So they have that first step of being listed in that audience. Not only is it just a full, small step, it is also audience building, tribe building, and I'm providing value and also creating an environment where people can actually get so much and connect with other entrepreneurs here and there. Because I noticed there was going to be a need for that because Facebook was going to um, you know, stop the reach of pages. Now we've created a solid foundation just by being patient. Just by being patient and studying the market and studying what the audience wants. And now we've got a product that is actually needed. It, 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 it looks like the product has been there for ages, but it's only been there for a month. And we've created a solid foundation from implementing patience. You know? And one other thing, while you're... you're your anxiety as an entrepreneur is, is elevated by you staying too much on social media. Don't rely exclusively on social media. As you can see, first of all, Facebook took away everything to do with Snapchat. For those people that relied on Snapchat as a, as a business builder, now they're going to have to you know, at, be at the mercy of Facebook, which has just recently reduced the reach of pages as well. So if you rely a lot in your business on social media, guess what's going to happen? You will be frustrated. And that's why you're going to be needing all these new shiny objects every single day. But if you create a platform, if you create an audience of, for yourself where you don't have to worry about the changes that are happening in the news feed, where you just have your people coming out to seek you, you know why? Because you created something important and meaningful. Guess who has more stress in their life? Somebody who's got a platform, which is either a blog or a podcast or, 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 or the Australian Business Online Directory or somebody who's waiting on Facebook to deliver their traffic. I know you can't ignore social media, but, you know, you know, make it, don't make it your number one strategy for traffic and leads. All right. Find out what your voice is. Find out what your audience really wants and create something that you can then use Facebook or, or social media to siphon that, that traffic. In other words, you're just creating yourself a platform, you know. Just creating a platform so that you don't have to stress whenever something changes in social media space. The bottom line of what I'm really trying to say is you want to build your business on your own platform, not somebody else's platform. And that's where patience really is needed for you creating that platform, building that prod podcast, building that blog, you know, building that email list. Because if you want people to sign up to your email list, you have to interact with them personally, not just on social media. So that needs patience. You need to know who your audience is and you need to know what your voice is in order for you to inject that leadership, in order for you to inject that whole, um, you know, persona and just focus on what's important, you know? So there's no need for you to be chasing all of these 
new and shiny objects. Build a platform, find your audience, find your voice, and create and relate for that, that audience. This is exactly what it took me a year to do. So patience is an undervalued you know, virtue. I might have started this show, you know, all over the place, but all I really wanted to do is figure out who you are, build your own audience, and make sure it's totally separate from what Facebook or social media it is because you don't have a business if all it relies on is social media. So have that audience, create for and relate for that audience, and you can only do that if you're not copying everybody else. You know, and then at the end of the day, you now have your own playground where other people can actually come around and say, hey, listen, can we play with you? And once you've got that, don't be afraid to, to charge a fair price because you've created something and now you can build people, you know, because, you know, it, it will be great to help as many people as possible for free, but you also have a family to take care of. You've got a business to look after and bills to pay. So the more you're adding value to people, people are actually happy to pay for something that is solid. If you find people arming and iring about paying for your services, you haven't given them enough value yet. That's all there is. And people are happy to pay for a fair price. And those that are not happy, that's why you need to figure out who is your audience, what is your voice, and don't be afraid to charge a fair price. Because if those people that are not willing and able to pay for your services, then let them be. You don't need to waste time on those people that are not going to be on tire kickers. So that's all it is. If you really want a business that's profitable and enjoyable, make sure you've got an audience. Create for and relate for uh, them and then have a platform that is way separate from social media, where your voice is heard, where you've got so much control and people know, like and trust who you are. And that's how you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And for those that are in Australia, if you haven't picked up a profile on the Australian Business Online Directory, um, I, don't know, I don't know how else I can make it enticing for you because now we're reaching so many numbers, so much content is being produced by other entrepreneurs just like yourself. And we've got videos, we've got educational equipment, um, you know, um, it's an educational resource that you can literally, um, you know, utilize you know, and um, it's just helping people really push towards their goals. You know, at the end of the day, all that you want is to succeed. So you have to determine, you know, um, right now, you know, if you're going to keep going, no matter what. Perseverance is what really makes your business grow. Not the next shiny object that Bujumbura or whoever is, is peddling on the newsfeed right now. Even if you haven't found the process yet, you can only connect the dots looking backwards. Last year, I was doing this whole life. I didn't know where it was he headed to, and I started doing interviews. Now those interviews are now gold, in as much as those people that I interviewed are now part and parcel of the Australian Business Online Directory. So if you find something that actually works, keep doing it, you know, and don't give up. I mean, you want to build this business one relationship at a time. One sale at a time. Stop trying to, you know, put out a net. You might just have a heavy net that is just full of seaweed. Have patience. It really takes a lot of time to build. You know, with focused effort, you can build, you know, a, a very powerful online business and grow your online presence. Do you know what I mean? And I hope that, you know, some of the strategies that I, um, you know, illustrated in this sh uh, show today would actually be used to optimize your business efforts. If you missed out on something, watch this video again or tag a person that you think might need to hear this because have patience and build something that helps your target audience. It's only focus and you will actually do this because people are tired of one click wonders. All right. Just because something worked last year, it doesn't mean it's going to work again this year. Figure out who are you? What does your audience really need? Who is that audience in the first place? 
How can you create for and relate to them in a meaningful way and create something that is meaningful while you're providing value because you're paid in direct proportion to the value you provide into the marketplace. Right? So whatever you're doing right now, audit yourself. Is this meaningful? Is this needed in the market? If not, figure out how you can stay true to yourself. How you can be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable is only through patience. I'm out of here. Hope you're going to have a fantastic day. Bye for now. And also, I will catch you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Um, yeah, let's keep doing this. Bye for now.